Introductory element, comma, independent clause, a study of the moon and bees. One, in the open parenthesis beside a conjunction, two commas nest. An independent clause on its way to the apiary spies them. Two direct objects of the mirror tested species, building a home in the branches of ascent. Two, somewhere a vacuum roars, Afternoon crickets crick in the ear. At night, when the world quiets down, every room vibrates deeply like a turbine. So that if you stand comma-wise on an otherwise blank page, a low moon throbs in your head. Replacing external sound with ceaseless inner noise is called tinnitus. Three. When the independent clause considers a comma, it pictures a bird lying on its side. Then the unclear referent adds more noise. The click of a predicate against subject or a suddenly desexualized wailing under the moon after which we named the lunatics. Four, lunatic from Latin lunaticus, originally referred to diseases people ascribe to the moon. It's easy to blame things on the moon. For instance, madness, epilepsy, fever, rheumatism, tinnitus, often felt as an unending ringing, buzzing, chirping, whooshing, and or vibrating in the skull. And love, an unending same. Disease is thought to be caused by the moon. Melanoma, sunburn. Six. Between 1765 and 1813, Members of the Lunar Society of Birmingham called themselves lunatics. Who were they? A dinner club of industrialists, natural philosophers, intellectuals, illustrious figures, and other non-restrictive appositives in an age with little street lighting. It is no longer polite to call someone a lunatic. Trust me. Seven. Occasionally, let's say after no sleep, the buzz of tinnitus may be mistaken for bees. This has caused at least one independent clause, walking past a leaf that grazed his cheek to startle, suddenly cold in the summer, and look all around him for a predator. Eight, anyone who's ever been stung knows politeness is not the domain of honeybees. The propolis they produce when mixed with wood gives redness to the violin. Nine, honeybees exhibit chronic despair after being shaken. Through pheromones and the dance language, honeybees invert this reaction to reintroduce a kind of prelapsarian bliss to the hive. Sad party is their grammar. Like the moon, they have grown less successful over time. They make fewer nutrients. They get harder to see in the dark. This is mostly our fault we who invented the lightness. 10, the method of lunar distance. In celestial navigation, the angular distance between the moon and another celestial body. Combine this angle in a nautical almanac to calculate Greenwich mean time. By comparing your calculated time to local time, the navigator may determine longitude. Bees do something similar when they fan their wing pieces for landing. 11. The average ambient noise of cities has grown by about 30 decibels. Every three decibels represents a doubling of sound pressure. Cities are therefore 1,000 times louder than the soft, grassy world we knew before language. Long-term exposure to environmental noise may cause high blood pressure, headaches, insomnia, tinnitus, and hyperacusis, a kind of co colony collapse syndrome of the ear. Hyperacusis amplifies everyday sound. The clinking of silverware on a dinner plate may cause the sufferer's ear to spasm painfully. A lover's laughter may hurt purely for physical reasons. Semicolons keep various facts about the world from bumbling into one another. 12. Beethoven suffered from both tinnitus and hyperacusis. During the siege of Vienna, 
The unbearable loudness of faraway bombs drove him crying to his brother's basement, where the famous composer jammed pillows against his ear to stop himself from exploding. Several years earlier, he wrote the Moonlight Sonata. 13. Reading the years may be a warning sign of glioblastoma, a rare and aggressive cancer born in the brain. Average age of onset is 64. In coronal MRIs, the tumor may resemble a hive. Mean survival time is three months without treatment. Treatment adds an additional nine to 12 months to this sentence. Imagine what you could do one year from now. 14. The wooden sign saying, do not shake the bees, is sad. How many bees had to be shaken for the dispassionate researcher to notice the chronic despair reaction, record it, and then puzzle over whether it was even worth mentioning? Sadder still, think of all the people who will disobey a sign because it's there. 15. All things can be related to one another given enough semicolons in time, the careful combination of which may add up to one independent clause containing everything, magpies and manta rays, the only non-mammals who understand a mirror, Beethoven and honeybees, doomed musicians who ceaselessly buzz, the moon and other distances. This phenomenon, known as grammar, was invented many years ago by self-aware birds who lost their feathers and out of unquenchable necessity built loud hives in the grass called cities. According to laws these birds invented, every independent clause, no matter how complex, must end with a period, a question mark, or an exclamation point, the latter also known as a bang. 16. Ending an independent clause with an ellipsis is considered non-standard, ungrammatical, uncool, against the rules, implying as it does a wish not to end, to leave things unsaid, to return at some indefinable point to itself. 17, dot, dot, dot. 18, dear indispensable, unforgettable independent clause, please do not shake the bees. Sincerely, the moon. Thank you.